I'm Yuri. I'm Jacob. And we're going for a drive. Twenty twenty Ford Expedition. King Ranch with Outlaunch Control. Horsepower and torque. 375 horsepower, 470 pound-feet of torque from a three and a half liter EcoBoost V6. Okay, so it's not that fast, but that seems like a lot of torque. Not right off the line, but it really picked up after. So this is Ford's biggest SUV and it's full size so you can fit real people in every single row. Yes, and then there's also the Max, which would extend the back end. Which would compete exactly with a Suburban. This is more Tahoe. Exactly. So we've already done the F-150 King Ranch and this is exactly the same thing, just in SUV form. Yeah, so inside, carbon copy. So let's start with the outside because it is different. I really like the front end, especially the headlights, and I think this looks better than the F-150 front end. Yeah, because the headlights kind of have those cool outlines that also wrap around the chrome on the grill, so it makes a really cool like circle shape. Yeah, it's almost kind of like what the Ardeon and other cars are starting to do now. Yeah, the whole front end does look nice, good headlights. How about the side view? Side view I think looks decent, but this is where I think the Tahoe looks better. Yeah, this is just normal big SUV side view. We've got this in blue and it does pop in certain lights, which is kind of nice. And then we also have that kind of brownish accent at the bottom, exactly like we did on the F-150, which is kind of hard to see in some light. And one of the biggest differences that I noticed from the side versus the Tahoe is that we do not have air suspension on this, so we are just jacked up. But also on the side, we do have running boards that come out and go back when you open and close the door. Yeah, which is really nice. And then these wheels are actually really good. Okay, so they got the King Ranch logo in the middle, but these ones are not all chromed out like the King Ranch truck we drove. I like this style more. So do I. I think it just works really well here. Then what would be the Continental recommended tire for the Ford Expedition? The Cross Contact LX25. And then this one is chromed out, but it suits the King Ranch Edition. Yeah, people buying this want that. So now moving on to the back end, we do have really good taillights. Yeah, really good looking, kind of like the F-150, also the Explorer as well. Yeah, I like how the light doesn't bleed out from that little strip. Yeah, it's just like a solid LED. And then we got Expedition written on the back in chrome, which we don't mind on this vehicle. How about the exhaust tips? The exhaust tip is only on the right side and it is real AF. <laughs> it is not one of the fake ones that points down? No, it's so good. Except you can't really see it unless you like look under the truck. Okay, and what does this thing sound like? Let's find out from the outside. It sounds all right, and in here it kind of sounds okay as well, so Yuri, just pin it for me. Uh -huh. It's kind of just like this droney V8-ish sound from like a simulated kind of perspective, because this is a V6. Nothing sporty, and I don't really expect anything sporty out of it. And I don't think anyone else does either. So that's pretty much it with the looks. Nothing too crazy. Overall, pretty good looking. Yeah, I think this thing does look really good. I think this kind of looks better than the Tahoe from certain angles, but I think I overall like the Tahoe more. I think they matched Ford for Ford guys and Chevy for Chevy guys perfectly. Yeah, but this front end is just way better than the Tahoe front end for me. Kind of, yeah. <laughs> so quickly before we talk about the materials and how much seating room there is inside, I wanna talk about the tech that's in here. Okay, so it's pretty much just Ford Sync that we've had in basically every other Ford in the last couple of years. Yeah, it works perfectly adequately for an older vehicle. We've got a really good 360 camera and reverse camera with very, very good stitching because it's so high up, but it is a little low res, but it's clear. And we do have Android Auto and Apple CarPlay and they both work as expected. We got a volume knob, a tuning knob, a bunch of hard buttons for favorites, which is also very refreshing. And then more hard buttons below that and all hard buttons for the climate. Yeah, which is great in today's age of everyone doing everything in touchscreens. And then we have Sirius XM, but when we're using the tuning knob to go through it, like it doesn't work the way you'd expect it to. It like kind of skips screens to something else and shows a different version. It's just like not buttery smooth. So let's move on to these gauges. I think they're pretty cool looking, especially with the blue needles, but they are analog with some digital in the middle that we've been seeing in the F-150. Yeah, it's the exact same. Yes. Yeah, so no real issues, but tech-wise, we do have lane departure assist, but it's not like that good lane keep assist that keeps you right in the middle. Like the it's Ford, not lane centering. Not like the Ford Edge ST. Yes, or the Aviator and stuff like that. Exactly. And as basic as that sounds, that's pretty much it for tech. So let's talk about the seating room, the materials, driving with you behind the wheel. Horsepower and torque. You mean third row room. Horsepower in third row room. Traction off. Dude, 
dude, when you get in those upper RPMs and you're going, that's when you really feel that torque. I bet you'd feel it a lot more when you're towing stuff. How much can it tow? Dude, up to 9,200 pounds, which is so many pounds. So many pounds of jet skis. Yeah, probably like eight jet skis. Yeah, oh dude, that's like, that's a lot. The double quadruple trailer? Yeah, yeah. I want to double stack like layers of jet skis one day. <laughs> <laughs> So this is the three and a half liter EcoBoost. And like I said, there's tons of torque. It feels pretty good once you're going, but it's definitely nothing remarkable, but it's not slow by any stretch. Yeah, but it's just not quick off the line at, yeah, at all. Exactly. And we do have a 10 speed auto in here and it's actually pretty good. It's the same one that we have in the F-150. So a little bit slow to downshift, but it's pretty seamless other than that. And we don't have paddles, but we do have a plus minus button that's absolutely gigantic below the shifter. Yes, and the shifter is straight out of the GT500. <laughs> You mean the Ford GT? Yes. Both. <laughs> yes, exactly. And we have a bunch of different drive modes with our drive mode selector, but they're actually kind of slow to switch and the animations for them are a little bit annoying. So I've just left it in sport mode. I mean, Ford is known to be a super laggy infotainment company. Yes, especially with the gauges and stuff. And by the way, if you're one of the designers, if you work on a car and you have a reason why something is laggy and you want to approach us professionally, hit me up on LinkedIn, Yuri Tershin. Not the Instagram and stuff for the engineers. <laughs> that way we can verify that you're a real engineer yeah. for whatever company that is. I mean, they could probably just make a fake profile Yo, too. Hit me, hit me up on that LinkedIn premium. So let's get to all the room in here, starting with the second row. Very good. And the third row? Also very good. Is it easy to get in and out? Yes, it is because you can move the seats very easily. Okay, and I guess that's all you really need to know about all three rows. Yeah, fantastic job in here. So let's find out what they did with the box test. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 18, 19, 20, 21, and 22. Get your own name on a box on patreon.com slash the straight pipes. That is legendary. That is an insane amount of boxes. How much is the Expedition Max going to have? I don't, we don't even have enough boxes. And we haven't tested a Tahoe or a Suburban yet because we keep doing them on weird trips. But one of these days, we will and we'll compare. And what about the visor test? Oh, that's a big mast. Three, two, one. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Ford's always pass. Okay, cup holders. So we've got a medium and a small. They ooh, both fit just fine, no problem. And we even have cup holders back here as well. And in between all those cup holders, we do have a large King Ranch logo, which is pretty cool. Oh, ranch, the, the <laughs> W is silent. And as we found out in our F-150 King Ranch review, King Ranch is named after a guy named King who owns a ranch in Texas. And you guys were like really upset in the comments about that. Like, you don't know about the King family? They own all of yeah. Texas. Like, I all right, bro, we're like, a lot higher up. Yeah, yeah. What do you guys know about Alberta's ranches and stuff? Yeah. yeah. And then in this armrest, we also have a ton of room. You could probably fit like 17 meatball subs from Subway in there. <laughs> also, I got a gripe with this. We have a pen holder right here. It says pens, but each one will only fit one pen. So I think it should say pen instead of pens. But pens can refer to both pens. Yeah, but pen and pen because they wrote it twice. What if they wrote pens with two arrows instead? That would be better. LinkedIn, hit me up. Why, why did you write pants twice? And the rest of the materials are just as good as they were in the F-150. We have leather basically everywhere, but the shade of the brown, we're not fans of again. Yeah, it's too dark, but it's also not like a bad shade of brown because it could be too baby poopy brown. Yeah, it's just the brown on black. There's not enough contrast. Yeah, if it was brown on light beige, that would be hot. That would be. Okay, and then up in the glove box area, we have this other glove box that pops open here too. But it's not as fancy as like the Ram Laramie. Yeah, like... yeah they got like someone actually branding their yeah, yeah. materials. <laughs> That's like, cool. holy. And time to send it into cliche corner appropriately for the type of vehicle that this is. It's actually pretty comfortable. Tons of body roll. It doesn't handle remarkably well, but that's not a bad thing because this is a big ass truck. Yeah, we were <laughs> B A B A T. Yeah, exactly. But but we were we were driving it in the rain and it did it was a lot sketchier in the rain. Yeah, yeah, but totally fine in the dry. But the one thing that's kind of weird is the steering. It's like exceptionally light. It kind of feels like it's heavy, but it actually doesn't really do anything until you turn quite a bit more. So I prefer the steering on the Tahoe much more. Yeah, but this is the kind of truck that you just put a whole bunch of people in and just kind of like drive around. Like you're almost a chauffeur if you're driving this. Pretty much, but we do have independent rear suspension just as we did in the Tahoe, but I felt a lot better driving the Tahoe. And this doesn't have air suspension like the Tahoe does. Even though this is comfortable, the Tahoe is way more comfortable than this now. And if you enjoy watching us throw these big ass trucks into a cliche corner, consider subscribing. Yeah, we pretty much toss everything through here. So uh, school bus review, oh, I would love to. 
Uh, Bigfoot monster truck review? Yeah, we haven't done one yet, but I would love to. Hover bike drone car review? I'll fly, I'll fly right through it. Okay. <laughs> And we also have a wireless charger, which tells you that your phone is charging in the infotainment, so it doesn't actually light up on your phone. And then you also have USB and USB-C, but I found that the wireless charger like charges so slow. It does, but I think most of them do. And then if you put your phone there while it's plugged in, it just makes it extra hot. <laughs> yeah, because it actually still wireless charges even though your phone's plugged yeah, in. Yeah, because you probably turn it off somehow, but it's just... Yeah. Things are weird. But it is nice to have all these hard buttons for everything. You complain about not having a camera button in most cars. Yeah. We have one right here. Camera button here is so much better than what Tahoe does by burying it in the infotainment and the Yukon as well. And hey, we also have automatic parking and parking assist buttons down here too. Which is awesome. And we have hill descent assist, and then we also have two high, four auto, and four low. And then we can also lock the rear diff. So I've been driving this in two high because I think it feels a lot better than four auto because I feel like it tries to send power when it shouldn't. Yeah, this is just normal Ford truck stuff. Exactly. And how do you find these seats? Do you find them comfortable? Oh yeah, exceptionally comfortable. No issues, but there is no massage, which is, it would have been nice. I kind of like the piping. It really pops. <laughs> It does, right? Yeah, yeah, it does. It pops more than the actual leather and everything. And I guess we were mentioning the Longhorn from Ram, but like they don't have an SUV. They're just trucks. I know. They would be the Durango SRT, which isn't cowboy themed. That's right. And I mean, it wouldn't be the SRT compared to this. It would just be the regular one. But yeah. But there is an SRT, but there isn't a ST Expedition. That's right. <laughs> ST Explorer, which is a three row, but smaller than this. Yes. Okay. Everything is pretty much covered now. Let's get to the price. This one is $82,975. Canadian. And that's quite a bit of money, but it's in line with all of its competition. And then the Navigator would be the expensive version for Lincoln of this too. That's right, and that thing's about 100 grand, and we already drove that and really liked it as well. Yeah, comparing both, I feel like the Lincoln is a lot cooler. I mean, yeah, it's more expensive, but I would go for that over this. I think so too. And I think you get a lot more value in the Navigator than you do in the King Ranch. So you might as well just pay a little bit extra and actually get a Navigator. Yeah, it's more impressive. Then how about this compared to a Tahoe or a Yukon? I think I would go Tahoe or Yukon over this because they're just so good in the new generation. They are. The only thing that I like more about this is that we've got this camera button that's a hard button. Yes, but and all the cameras and stuff are just so much better quality in that as well yeah and you can have the ones that like point at your front wheel so you know where you're parking and everything like i feel like gm does have the edge against this it does now so let us know what you think of the ford expedition this tahoe lincoln suburban and click right here for a bunch of those videos that yuri just named the big old suvs right big boys big boys <laughs>